Oh boy, I bit off more than I could chew with this one. Today, I'm looking at Pippi Longstocking by Astrid Ling Lindgren. Lindgren? Is that how you pronounce it? Hold on. Astrid Lindgren. There, it's that. Astrid Lindgren. I chose to do a bit of a dive into Pippi after looking at this fan art by Sergei Biraltz. I hope I'm saying his name right, but probably not. Before I get too far into this video, I'm just going to let you all know my ground rules for this video. There's a lot of stuff for Pippi. There's books, there's movies, there's TV shows. For starters, we're looking at this. The Adventures of Pippi Longstocking is a collection of the first three books. Pippi Longstocking, Pippi Goes on Board, and Pippi in the South Seas. Next, here's a nice picture we got of all the filmography. I'll be looking at these highlighted sections. And here's a picture with some additional books for Pippi. I'm not going to look into them, but you could look into them for yourself. And let me just say there, there's a lot. It took me a while. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to review all of this together, but I'll tell you this. All the movies I'm watching, you can get a physical copy of. There's this one with Inger Nilsson. She's basically the face of Pippi, or she was for the longest time. She was in the original TV series, and I guess they just got the entire cast back together for the movies. Which you can see here, it's Pippi Longstocking, Pippi Goes on Board, Pippi in the South Seas, and Pippi on the Run. We have the new adventures of Pippi Longstocking, which came out in 1988. And we also have Pippi Longstocking, the animated movie, which came out in 97. This one also had a TV series the next year, at least according to this picture. But before all of that, Let's talk about the creator, Astrid Lindgren, and the illustrator, Ingrid Van Niemen. Van Niemen. How do you, how do you pronounce your name? Hold on. Ingrid Van Niemen. There you go. Ingrid Van Niemen. Astrid Anna Amelia Lindgren was born in Nas, Sweden, November 14th, 1907, and she died in January 28th, 2002 from an infection. She was famous for writing fiction and screenplay, and she had over 30 works besides Pippi Longstocking. Some of them are Mio, My Son, Ronia, The Robber's Daughter, and The Brother's Lionheart. Astrid used to work in a newspaper and had an affair with the chief editor who was married. She moved away and learned how to be a secretary and eventually gave birth to her son. And in her new job, she eventually married someone from there. And after giving birth to her son, she put him in foster care for about four years until she had enough money to take him with her to her parents' home in Stockholm, where she would spend the rest of her life. Astrid's works were inspired by her lived experiences. And the children she wrote didn't really respect authority, which naturally caused some people to be upset. In 1948, she was flown over to America by the women's magazine the Mernas Vard, which translates to Women's World, in order to write some short essays. Reportedly, she was upset about how black Americans were treated in America. And a few years after her trip there, she released a book of essays called Kati, with the first being Kati in America. She was also a political figure. She was against the corporal punishment of children and worked with scientists, journalists, and politicians to get legislation passed that would prohibit violence against children in Sweden. And this is also allegedly the first law in the world that prohibited violence against children. She also worked hard to get better treatment for animals, but she felt that whatever she helped get passed didn't go far enough or did too little. She once made a satirical story called Pomperiposa in Monismania. It's based off her own personal experience. At the time, Sweden had these tax laws that said self-employed people also had to pay income tax as employers so they were charged as an employer and as a self-employed person and as a result of this Astrid had to pay 102 percent of her income one year which really upset her and her making the story actually managed to make the Swedish Social Democratic Party which she was a part of lose power for the first time in over 40 years let's move on to the illustrator Ingrid von Niemann there's not much info on her. She isn't as famous as Astrid, which is kind of sad. From what I've managed to read, she was mostly self-taught. 
And while she did do some studying in university, she dropped out because she didn't like being there. She had a few years under her belt illustrating for books before Pippi, but Pippi was definitely her most famous work. She didn't travel that much, but she was fascinated with other cultures, most notably Chinese, African, and Indian culture. Her paintings were noted for being very accurate for the cultures they were depicting, and she apparently asked very high prices for her work in order to be treated more seriously as an artist. And while it did give her a lot of problems with people trying to commission her, she never had a problem with Astrid and being paid by Astrid. And Astrid even said, quote, Every author who has been fortunate enough to find a congenial illustrator for their book would be eternally grateful to that artist, end quote. So basically, I guess their vibes matched. They passed the vibe check with each other, which is nice. I'm glad Astrid and Ingrid got along well. Now, on to Pippi Longstocking. One day, Astrid's daughter was sick, and Astrid was too tired to really do much, and she just asked her daughter what kind of story she wanted to hear. Then she said, make a story about Pippi Longstocking, which is a random name she came up with on the spot. And Astrid made up a suitable story to fit that name. And just so everyone knows, Pippi's full name is Pippilota Victualia Rulgardina Cruzminta Aflame's daughter Langstrom. But we just called her Pippi for short. And I'm pretty sure I didn't pronounce any of that right. But whatever. And throughout the 1940s, Astrid would just develop Pippi and really figure out what she's like. And surprisingly, when she finally found a publisher to publish her book, I think it is Robin and Sjorgen, Pippi just skyrocketed in popularity and it was helped by advertisements, radio readings, and critics of children's culture just singing praises of the book. It actually managed to save the publishing company, Robin and Sturgeon, from bankruptcy. And by the end of the 1940s, over 300,000 books were sold. And by 2000, I believe, over 5 million copies were sold globally, which is pretty good. I also think it's kind of funny that France had a censored version of Pippi Longstocking. And in 1995, they finally got the uncensored version, much to the surprise of the French. <laughs> there was also some controversy with the TV series. In 2014, Astrid's descendants wanted to do some edits to get rid of some racially insensitive stuff. And a lot of people in Sweden didn't like it. Astrid's grandchildren argued that not making it would weaken Pippi's message of female empowerment. I get where they're coming from. Because apparently in the original show, she called her dad King of the Negroes. And in another instance, she would slant her eyes and sing in fake Chinese, which is racist. I get why they would want to censor that out, but I don't think they should have. For as much as I despise Warner Brothers as a company, the one thing they do right is addressing the racially insensitive stuff they used to make and releasing it as is. Is there a disclaimer here where it says it's a product of its time. There are some depictions of ethnic and racial prejudices that were common back in those days. They were wrong then, they're wrong now, and it doesn't represent who we are now or the views of today's society, they're being presented as they were because doing otherwise is like saying these prejudices were never even there. That is a nice way to address the racially insensitive stuff while also preserving history. That's all the history I have, so let's look at the book now. Naturally, the book I have doesn't have the original illustrations. These new illustrations are done by Michael Chesworth. And honestly, I kind of enjoy these illustrations, but I guess that's because I was looking at them more than the original ones. I especially like this picture of her just doing a little bit of trolling to this rich dude in a suit. <laughs> I think it captures her energy very nicely. But anyway, what is the book all about? The first book is us mostly learning who Pippi Longstocking is. We see her moving into Villa Villa Coola, which is a house that's been abandoned for a very long time. It's kind of rickety, but Pippi doesn't mind. It's hers. This first chapter is very important. It shows us that she's been on the sea basically her entire life. Pippi gets separated from her dad during a storm. He gets swept overboard, but he yells at her that he'll be fine. He's so fat he'll just float and that he'll meet her at Villa Villa Coola. 
We learn she's a liar. She lies a lot, but she doesn't really mean to hurt anyone by her lies. We learn her mom is dead. She's in heaven. She buys her own horse and carries it. So we learn she has superhuman strength in this chapter. And we also learn she has a suitcase filled with gold coins for her to live off of. Because no matter what time or place you're at, you always need money to survive. We also meet her friends for the rest of the series, Tommy and Anika Sedrigan. We also meet Mr. Nielsen, her monkey. And one thing I'd like to comment on before we go any further is they drink a lot of coffee. I don't know if it was very common for the 40s for kids to drink coffee but they drink a lot of it in this book series <laughs> and i'm just reminded of that one clip from dexter's lab <laughs> hippie's horse doesn't really have a name in the books it's always just called horse in the original tv series and the movie that followed it they called him little old man i won't get into too many details about what's in the books because a lot of what's in the books comes out in the movies and the titles are kind of self-explanatory. They give you a rough idea on what you can expect. But it's the finer details that are more important, I believe. And while I'm talking about the books, I also bought this little thing. Pippi's Extraordinary Ordinary Day. For the most part, it's a chapter from one of the main books. But unlike the main books, there's a lot more illustrations in this single one than what you'll get in the big collection, which is pretty nice. I don't know how many of the smaller ones there are, but if there's one for each chapter, then I guess you can have a bit of a trade-off between having all of the books collected into one thing and just having that to save on space. But if you don't have to worry about space that much, you can get all the little ones because they're filled with illustrations you can look at versus the big one, which has mostly text with some illustrations. Ultimately, it comes down to you and what fits your needs. But yeah, the first book is all about learning who Pippi is, getting used to her personality. I'm sorry if I sound like I'm rambling, I really don't know how to proceed, so I guess I'll just talk about the movies and add on commentary to how it relates to the book and what happens in the book versus what's in the movie. And I guess we should also talk about the actors in the first movie. The original actress for Pippi is named Karen Inger Monica Nielsen, or at least the most famous actress for Pippi. I'm kind of curious about this earlier Pippi from 1949. I have no idea where I'm going to find the original of all the Pippi movies. So I guess that's a little hunt others can do. But anyway, her full name is Karen Inger Monica Nielsen. Being Pippi was her biggest role. I think right now she's working as a secretary and occasionally getting roles in tv and stuff and it seems like the movies are just re-edits of the tv show which i think is kind of interesting anika's actress is named maria person from what i understand she only acted as anika she tried to go into acting as a career but since everybody kept connecting her to being anika she couldn't get away from it she just gave up acting altogether and became a nurse it's sad that she couldn't become an actress but i guess it's nice she became a nurse to help people the actor for tommy is named par sundberg and i don't really know much info about him i'm guessing he just didn't choose acting as a career and moved on from that so i won't pry any further uh, spoiler alert i guess pippi's dad is played by john bertel beppe wolgers he was an author poet a translator a lyricist an actor and an artist he passed away in 1986 he seems like a pretty good dude he made music for some musicals before he became pippi's dad in the show and movies and i guess that's it these are all the characters you need to know I guess I should have said the main cast. But anyway, the first movie, Pippi Longstocking, mostly follows the first book with bits of the third and second book. Naturally, the first movie of this four-part collection, along with the new adventures and the animated movie, start off with the beginning of the book. This first movie also starts off with mostly chapter three of the first book, 
baby plays tag with some policemen and it's because the aunt for tommy and anika is kind of sticking her nose into pippi's business she's like i don't like that this kid is living alone she should be in a children's home where she can be looked after and fair enough you don't want to leave abandoned children all over the place in the book it's the entire town and they get these two cops to try and get her to go to the children's home i don't think they have names in the book but here in the movie they're called inspector kling and inspector kling and they're just trying to convince her to go to the children's home where she can learn math and stuff but Pippi just keeps talking circles around them and makes fools of them. She gets them stuck on the roof and eventually they acquiesce to her and they say to the townspeople in the book, they tell the townspeople, you know what? She can make her own arrangements and the people are like, oh sure, whatever. But in the movie, when they tell the aunt that they can't and they have to let her choose, she's like, oh no, I'm going to figure out how to make her go to the children's home. Another thing that's important in the book is Pippi's relationship to the other kids in the town and she's got a good relationship with them in the book. In the movie they get into it a bit with Pippi goes shopping which is in book two chapter two and it's basically that Pippi goes shopping and she buys a bunch of candy and toys for the kids in town and they're all cheering her praises and stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna get that in this movie. We also get Pippi going to a coffee party and she basically causes havoc there as well. In the middle of this, they insert another chapter of the book where she fights a bunch of bullies. And there's this questionable scene right here. Why don't you just sit down? <laughs> that was just the first punch, kid. What a nice start. I don't know what this is about. I think he's trying to unbutton the final button of his jacket, but it doesn't exactly look like that. Question mark. Moving on, let's not dwell on this. Luckily, Pippi trounces them. She beats them by throwing them up into a tree where they can't get down. We briefly return to the coffee party where Pippi throws a bunch of stuff onto the carpet and tears the carpet off the ground. And from there, we move on to another chapter. In the book, it's called Pippi Entertains Two Burglars. In the book, there are a couple of homeless guys that are just wandering around and they come in to ask for some food. In the movie, there are a couple of thieves that broke out of prison. In both the book and the movie, they stumble upon Pippi counting all her gold coins, which she doesn't do a very good job of because she doesn't know how to do math that well. And in both the movie and the book, they decide to try and rob her. They start by asking her if there's anyone else living with her. And she says, yes, there's Mr. Nielsen living here with me. And they assume that Mr. Nielsen is an adult man. And they decide to come back later in the night when they're both supposed to be sleeping. And when they do come back, they learn from Pippi that Mr. Nielsen is actually a monkey. And they're like, oh, whatever, let's take all her gold coins. And they said, hey, you don't mind if we take all this, don't you? And she's like, yeah, I don't mind. And they start taking it, but it's kind of heavy and they're kind of struggling with it. And then Pippi's like, and I hope you guys don't mind if I take it back. <laughs> she tosses them around in the movie. She throws one of them up on a cabinet in the movie. And they both realize, oh crap, this kid's too strong. And they're like, look kid, we only did this because we're super hungry and we needed some food. And we just saw all that money and fell into temptation. She makes them dance with her for a long time and eventually they decide to just leave. In the movie they get away and Pippi's like, oh they left before I could give them a gold coin each. But in the book she actually does give them each a gold coin because they honestly earned them for dancing with her. Which is pretty nice and sweet of her. Definitely a lot better than what you would normally see happen to a couple of burglars. Anywhere else you'd see them get beat up and thrown in jail when they're just a couple of homeless guys that wanted some food in the original book. Good on her. Good on Pippi. She's a good person. After this, you go into another chapter from the third book. It's called Pippi Finds a Spink. Spink is a word she just randomly comes up with. And she, Tommy, and Anika go on a treasure hunt to find it. And Pippi's just like, it could be this thing or that thing. It could be a disease I have. And along the way, we see Tommy and Anika's aunt just hunting down Pippi to try and get her to the children's home. And we see the robbers from before just doing a little song on the street to hopefully get some money. But they're also trying to hide from the cops because they broke out of jail technically. 
And these guys don't give up on trying to steal Pippi's coins, which is kind of dumb of them. They know how strong she is and how they can't do anything against her. From here, there's a bit of a change from the book in the movie. In the movie, they start using a hot air balloon to try and find this pink, which never happens in the book, which is nice. It changes things up a little bit because I'm going to be honest, I've been bored this entire time because i read the book first i already know what's generally going to happen so that kind of spoiled the movies for me <laughs> so these little switch ups are nice i hope there's more of them and naturally tommy and anika's aunt sees them fly off in the hot air balloon so she gets the officers from before to chase them down and save them but we also see that the burglars from before got pippi's gold and pippi just messes with them a little bit and steals her gold back and the officers see the thieves and start chasing them and the thieves get away by stealing the officer's motorcycle. Do you remember when I said her dad was lost at sea? She says a lot that he became the king of a cannibal island. Well here he is, he came back. And we see that they have a very sweet relationship. They arm wrestle to see who's stronger but they're evenly matched. This is the second book by the way. And we go through chapter 7, 8, and 9 which is just Pippi finally meets her dad again after seeing him lost. They have a farewell party because Captain Ephraim wants Pippi to live with him on Kurikurida Island, which is where he washed up on. There's some stuff that happens there that's pretty entertaining. And they finally have Pippi goes aboard the final chapter of the second book. All the kids in the book play these slide whistles that Pippi bought for them. <laughs> and Anika starts crying a little, it's kind of sad. And Pippi's eventually like, Dad, I want to go with you, but kids need a more structured life. Than what the sea can offer and i also can't stand seeing people cry for my sake and she chooses to go back to villa villa Kula and be with her friends and captain of frame is like pippi you're gonna need this and he throws her another suitcase full of gold coins and that's it that's the end of the first movie which is pretty nice you know i said i was bored and i kind of still am because i read the book i know what's gonna happen that's my fault i guess <laughs> but yeah it was a fine movie I think I said this before, but this movie is pieces of the TV series stitched together to make a movie, which isn't that unusual. Now let's move on to the second movie. Pippi goes on board. So Pippi goes on board, starts off where we left off last time, with Pippi on board her dad's ship, getting ready to leave but deciding to stay. The burglars from the last movie are in jail again, but they're already in the process of breaking out and already planning on trying to steal her gold coins again. This next scene is actually one of the final scenes we see in the book. It's Pippi doesn't want to grow up. In the book, it's Christmas time. Pippi and her friends are celebrating. Tommy and Anika are at their parents' place and spend Christmas with them. And the next day they spend it with Pippi, who was alone during Christmas. So in the book, Tommy and Anika missed Christmas with their parents for reasons I'll explain later. But they finally spend some time with them and finally spend some time with Pippi. But they didn't manage to spend time with their parents after a long time. Pippi says they can stay young forever if they eat these special pills. But Tommy says they're just peas and Pippi says no, they're special pills that she got in Rio. But there's a chance that they might not work. <laughs> it's kind of somber how it ends in the book. It's just Tommy and Anika in the room looking over at Villa Villa Kula and they see Pippi in her kitchen just sort of staring at a candle until she finally blows it out. And that's how we end the book. But in the movie, we just move on to the next day. Pippi, Tommy, and Anika are out shopping for a quick scene. Then we cut to the backyard where Tommy and Anika live. Their dad is playing darts. And Pippi shows him up. And he just becomes determined on perfecting his dart game. <laughs> and from here, they go on to a picnic. Pippi jumps off a cliff to see if she can fly. But naturally, she can't. Thankfully, she's a tough girl and it doesn't really hurt her when she lands. We also meet up with the burglars again. They're trying to fish out some fish from the stream. But Pippi is a nice girl and she sends them some food on a little wooden raft that they happily eat. But of course, they're still determined on trying to rob all her gold coins. And we learn from some kids that Pippi bought them a bunch of candy. They decide to try and steal it again. When they cut the night and they're celebrating Pippi's birthday. I think it's kind of dangerous, but they had the actors for Pippi light up a tiki torch thing, and we cut to a bunch of them outside. 
Tommy and Mika come and give Pippi a music box with some candy inside. Pippi gives some gifts to them as well and then they start eating. They go into Pippi's attic looking for ghosts. Anika's a little nervous about it but Tommy kind of picks on her a bit to make it go with them. This gets into something I'm pretty uncomfortable with because in the process of hunting for ghosts, Pippi finds a couple of flintlock pistols. In the movie, it's a flintlock, but in the book, it just says pistol. It doesn't specify whether it's a modern gun or a flintlock. And in the movie and in the book, Pippi just fires them off into her ceiling to scare the ghosts. I don't know what people thought of that back in the day, but in modern times, yeah, you can't show that to kids. They're going to emulate it. So if you're going to show these movies or read the book to your kids, just make sure to tell them that some things shouldn't be copied and this is one of them. Additionally, Pippi gives one of the pistols to Tommy. I believe in the book he keeps it, but thankfully here in the movie, he stealthily puts it back behind Pippi's back, which I think is good. After this, we see the burglars just creeping around outside Pippi's home. I'm surprised they stuck around despite them having to have heard her shooting a pistol in her house. But yeah, they stick around. We cut to the next day. Tommy and Anika are at a lake or something. And there's a sunken boat there. And suddenly Pippi appears in the water. And she hauls the boat out of the water and they take it to her house to fix up. Which is pretty interesting. That doesn't happen in the book. Tommy and Anika's aunt come by. I don't think I ever mentioned her name. Her name is Aunt Lizzie. I think her name is Aunt Laura in the book. But yeah, Aunt Lizzie just comes by, tries to make Pippi go to the kids' home again, but she they just scares her off or whatever. We cut to them on the lake in the boat, sailing to this island or whatever. I think they're pretending to be castaways or shipwrecked, and they just spend the night camping out there. But for whatever reason, Pippi has her pistol with her. She fires it off into the bushes, which is super dangerous. Thankfully, she doesn't do that in the movie, but she does point it around like she is going to shoot it, which is still dangerous. They camp out for the night. Next morning, they eat. They row back to shore. Tommy and Anika get bored by their aunt on the piano, and they just scavenge around looking for stuff. Nothing in particular, just whatever they find. Until finally, Pippi leads them back to her house, where she hid some gifts in the stump for Tommy and Anika to find, which is nice. She cares a lot about them. Time passes. We learn there's a circus or a fair coming into town. Tommy and Nika are wandering around looking at it getting set up. They go to invite Pippi, but Pippi is in a dress and her head is veiled with a big hat. And she just trolls them into going into the house looking for her, but she's just right there in front of them. <laughs> but yeah, they get some gold coins and they head off to the circus. Everyone is having a good time. They ride a ferris wheel. Pippi makes it go faster by holding on to it and running on the ground. She competes with a strong man. She beats him. There's a lady with a snake. Pippi interferes with that too. And her time here ends with someone getting a pie out of the face. We cut to winter. Pippi's playing in the snow. She gets on the horse and rides it into town. But Tommy and Anika are like, Nah, Pippi, we have to go to school. And Pippi's like, Well, that's no fun. I think I'll drop by. And she does. Pippi isn't someone that's much into getting an education. The teacher tries to teach Pippi, but nah, she's not a schoolgirl. Eventually, she decides that one day is enough and she leaves. And we just cut to, I guess, after school. Pippi's playing with all the kids. The burglars are there. They're like, oh, that's Pippi. She's not at home. Let's go steal her bag of coins. And they do. But while they're walking around town with it, Pippi sees them with her bag. And she takes them out with the giant snowball she made. Tommy and Anika's aunt is still trying to get Pippi to go to the children's home. Despite not trying before in a couple of scenes earlier, and she gets the cops to do it again. I guess they forgot what happened to them last time, but she gives them the slip. She goes home. We see her making cookies. She has the dough rolled out on the floor and she's cutting out shapes. The movie is nearing its end. Tommy and Anika are celebrating at their parents' place while Pippi is all alone in her house with Horace and Mr. Nielsen. She's roasting an apple over her stove. And just as we think the movie is about to end with her just being alone, all the kids from town show up with Tommy and Anika to give Pippi a gift and to thank her for being such a good person to them. And they give her a trumpet. And that's it. That's the end of the second movie, which is pretty nice. 
I don't think this ever happened in the book. So it's nice that it happened here. Because while Pippi has a good relationship with all the kids in town, you don't really see it that much in the books. But yeah, it's time to move on to the third movie, Pippi in the South Seas. Alright, we are entering Uncharted Waters. <laughs> because this movie is nothing like the book. They actually created their own plot line either in the show or something completely new for the movie because Pippi in the South Seas in the book is them going to the island where her dad washed up and became the king of the people there. While here in the movie, Pippi finds a message in a bottle but since she can't read, she has Tommy and Anika read it and it says that her dad's been captured and imprisoned by pirates. I think these pirates are former members of his crew that wanted to be captain and he needs Pippi to come and save him. And since the book has no bearing on this, I had a lot of fun watching this movie. Because <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know it was coming. So everything was a surprise. <laughs> Pippi's dad is being held in this old fort. They're trying to get him to talk about where his treasure is. And they only feed him bread and water. And they got a parrot there acting as a sentry or whatever. Just mocking him and making sure he doesn't try and escape. They start out their adventure by getting onto this bed Pippi showed off earlier. It has a balloon on it and they just float away. Oh, by the way, Tommy and Anika's mother and father are on vacation. So we don't have to worry about them figuring out about their kids not being around. So yeah, they're on vacation. Don't worry about them. Anyway, they float away and there's really nothing they can do other than to maybe sing a song and eat until they go to sleep, wake up and find out they're stuck on top of a mountain. And you just have to continue on foot. We get a quick scene of the pirates trying to instill discipline among the ranks, but nah, they don't really care. It doesn't work. And we cut back to the kids. They're in a junkyard and they make this really sketchy airplane out of wood and a bicycle. They get into the air. Somehow, Pippi's carrying the plane above her head and she's running while Anika is pedaling to make a propeller spin until they get enough lift to fly into the air and Pippi takes over because she's the strong one she can actually handle it and wouldn't you know it they're flying straight over a volcano there's fire and smoke everywhere these kids have gone to hell <laughs> but they manage to get through it Pippi spots an island in front of them that they crash land onto we're constantly getting bombarded with b-roll of dangerous animals but there's no way there are lions and crocodiles on this random island in the pacific no. No, it's the Atlantic Ocean. Wait, we cut to Pippi's dad. His name is a frame, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that before. He's getting interrogated by the pirates that overthrew him, but he isn't budging. He's like, you see this? It's a message in a bottle. I've been sending messages to my daughter and she's going to come and rescue me. And the other guys are like, oh, please, we've got guns, cannons, an army of pirates. And the frame is just like, we shall see. <laughs> He's got a lot of confidence in his daughter, which is nice. The kids made a shelter for the night. And in the morning, we see a boat passing by. Pippi swims by to see what's up. And she finds out that they're part of the pirate crew that overthrew her dad. She swims back through shark infested water to tell Tommy and Anika to get all their stuff. They're taking over the ship. Pippi learned their names so she uses that to lure them onto the island and they throw one of the pirates that stayed behind overboard and they sail away and at this point I realize I may not want to watch the series because as they are sailing away Annika starts washing their clothes and she takes her shirt off. She's completely topless and they show it. it it's uncomfortable for me and then Tommy does it too. It's a quick scene from a different era and Europe doesn't have the same hangups on nudity as America does. With that being said, I don't want to see naked children. Please don't do that anymore. Moving on, the kids find their way to the pirate island. They sneak around trying not to get caught until they find their way into a bar. They meet this other kid named Marco and he's just abused by the bartender and all the patrons. Until Pippi stands up for him. She hangs the bartender on a wall and throws a couple pirates out the window. <laughs> then the two leaders come. They're like, what's going on here? And they finally meet Pippi and they get nervous. They make a hasty retreat. Pippi comes up with a plan or whatever. They talk with Marco for a bit, but the pirates are just setting up the entire island to keep the kids trapped and get Pippi. 
They come back, swords ready, but Pippi uses her super strength to blow out all the torches to make it dark. She escapes and there's a manhunt for her. She easily beats any pirate she comes across. The pirates are setting up the defenses where they're keeping Pippi's dad. And the two pirates that overthrew him are threatening him with pistols. But he's like, you're, you're not stupid. If you kill me, you won't be able to find the treasure. And they're like, yeah, he's got us there. Nothing we can do right now. All we can do is half the bread and water we're giving him and that's it. They leave. The kids get some help from Marco to sneak in. They hide in some cannons. And before the pirates get a chance to test the cannons, Pippi manages to steal a pistol off a pirate and shoots their pirate flag with it. That freaks the pirates out and they man their battle stations, which gives the kids some time to hide in a well. It's like midday and the kids hide out until dark. Pippi finds out where they're keeping her dad. Because he's crying uncontrollably, he just soaks his handkerchief with his tears. And he hangs it out to dry and Pippi's like, I remember that handkerchief. I made it for my dad. <laughs> but at night, the kids are starving. So Pippi sneaks out, steals them some food. She steals a knife off of one of the pirates that overthrew her dad. And she uses it to climb up the wall of the tower to see him. But the pirate she stole the knife from eventually comes, tries getting her dad to talk about where the treasure is, until he finds out his knife is missing and he's just like, I'm Jock the Knife. I'm nothing without my knife. And he just starts frantically searching for it. And Pippi goes to get some food for her dad. The pirates find out about the food and they decide to lock him up in the deepest hole in the dungeon. But Pippi's like, and eh, that's fine. And she grabs some dynamite to blow him out. <laughs> When they break him out, they steal back his boat and they sail to the island where his treasure is. It's also where his loyal crew members are. While they do find the treasure, they have to give it up because the other pirates came, but they get to jump on them. They steal the rowboats and their main boat and now they're trapped there with all the gold. And Pippi slowly scams all the gold out of them so that they have all the gold and the pirates have none. At the end of it, a frame says he's proud of his daughter and she sails off in one of the pirate boats while the frame sails off in his boat somewhere else and we get our happy ending. <laughs> I had fun with this movie. It was a breath of fresh air from knowing exactly what was going to happen to not knowing what they were going to do. But now we're going on to the final of the movies, Pippi on the Run. And since they went in a completely different direction with South Seas, I'm going to assume On the Run is completely different as well. So what is Pippi on the run like? Well, it starts off with Tommy and Anika's parents getting dinner ready. But Tommy and Anika are at Pippi's place just doing whatever they want, being loud. Until they realize they've been there for too long and they have to go home. Pippi keeps doing her thing while Tommy and Anika are in a lot of trouble and forced to go to bed. And in the morning we see that the both of them are kind of rebellious. They don't really want to do what their parents tell them to. And they just decide to run away. They tell it to their faces. This is kind of a weird turn for me. Because in the book it feels like they have a very healthy relationship with their parents. Like... In Pippi in the South Seas, the only reason Pippi goes to the South Seas is because Tommy and Anika almost die from measles. And their doctor says once they start recovering from it that they need a change in climate to get better. We don't see it directly in the book, but Tommy and Anika's mom asked Pippi to take them to the South Seas with her. Everyone in town is like, we understand why you would send your kids away. But Pippi Longstocking? And their mother, Mrs. Settergren, says, Why shouldn't I? The children have been sick and the doctor says they need a change of climate. As long as I've known Pippi, she has never done anything that has harmed Tommy and Anika in any way. No one can be kinder to them than she. Pippi Longstocking's manners may not always be what they ought to, but her heart is in the right place. And so... She sends them off with Pippi for their good health, which is nice and shows that, yeah, they have a good relationship. They love each other. I don't think I've ever seen them misbehave or be rebellious in the books like they are here in the movie. So Tommy and Anika run away, saying it straight to their mother's face. And while Pippi just sort of hangs around, not really caring, she does eventually offer to be a sort of escort. For Tommy and Anika, and their mother agrees, so all three of them get on the horse, and they're off into the woods, and they find wild strawberries and start eating them. They mess around for a while, 
and they're following a path as it gets dark. But eventually it starts raining and there's lightning. And the lightning scares off a little old man. So the kids have to take shelter in this abandoned house. Oh, and just to let you know, almost nothing in this movie is in the book. They're hearing this strange noise. And it's this traveling salesman using a saw as a violin. His name is Conrad. He sells this super glue. And Pippi uses it to climb the walls and walk on the ceiling. Eventually they get tired and settle down for the night. Conrad leaves in the morning before they wake up. They start on their adventure again and they start climbing down this steep cliff. They're all tied to each other and Tommy and Nika lose their footing. But thankfully, Pippi's still there and she can carry them down safely. This next scene is sort of like what you have in the book. In the book, it's a quick scene where Pippi gets in a barrel and rides it down a waterfall. But in the movie, it's a major plot point that separates Pippi from Tommy and Nika. So now Tommy and Anika have to survive without Pippi and they're kind of miserable without her. They just barely miss each other and while Tommy and Anika are just wandering around Pippi, she just starts breaking reality. She gets like a broken bicycle and starts riding it around. <laughs> it's kind of silly, kind of lighthearted considering how serious their situation is and how Pippi promised to protect them. Pippi finds her way into a town and she finally meets up with Tommy and Anika and the two of them have been kind of sad because you don't have any money to buy food. And Pippi says, if you want food, you gotta earn money to buy it. So you start making music in the street until they get chased off by a guy that throws his shoes at them. But Pippi glues it to the ground and he can't get them off the ground anymore. <laughs> They're eating what little they have and Pippi tells them to just jump on this train and they do and they ride it off. They ride it for a while but then Pippi sees a truck with some hay in it and she gets them to jump into it. The guy driving the truck eventually drives into his farm and finds out that the kids were there and he's a little upset. He's like, I have way too many kids to take care of already. I'm not going to take care of you. The kids stay at their hayloft for the night. They sort of make themselves useful. They just sort of wander on the farm. At one point, the farmer is trying to deal with this bull, but it's very aggressive. And Pippi does this matador routine to get the bull under control, which earns the farmer's respect. And they see this old beat up car that doesn't work anymore that the farmer is kind of proud of. Pippi asks if she could have it and the farmer's like, hey, if you can remove it, sure. But since you can't, you'll have to come over to see it. But Pippi's like, awesome, I have a car now. And she somehow manages to fix it. She dumps a bunch of super glue she still had from Conrad into the engine, which doesn't seem very smart. In fact, it doesn't seem smart at all because a bunch of foam starts coming out of the engine or where you put the fuel in. But the car starts running and they fly off. And the farmer gets scared and he's like, what are you doing? Kids can't drive cars. But Tommy's like, yeah, but this is Pippi. She can even sail a boat. <laughs> and there's Pippi steering the car with her feet while she sits on the top of the chair. This this is very silly <laughs> and also very dangerous. Don't don't copy this, please. And in defiance of reality itself, the car starts flying somehow. I don't know why. They just say that Conrad's glue is too strong and they're just zooming along until they finally jump into a lake, I guess. And it was at this point I realized I will never watch the TV series or go back to these movies ever again because they decide to have fun in the lake. Pippi swims in all her clothing because she's Pippi. But Tommy and Anika strip down to their underwear which makes me very very uncomfortable and I don't want to see this. But it's a plot point now because a cow comes by and eats their clothes. So now they're stuck in their underwear. But Pippi manages to get them some sacks to throw over themselves. I don't know what to say. Uh, but now they really have to make money to get them some actual clothes. They start off by trying to do music, but eventually they decide to do this trapeze thing across a busy street with Pippi and just get money that way. And luckily they do manage to make enough money to buy some new clothes for Tommy and Anika. But this cop confronts them saying that what they did was very dangerous and that they should come with him to the station. He seems like a chill guy. He feeds them, gives them some candy. But he's like, look, kids, you can't be running away. I have to call your parents because it'll look bad if I don't. And we also have to make sure you guys don't run away again. I have to lock you up here to keep you safe. 
until your parents come by to pick you up and just sort of closes the door and leaves them in this cell. But naturally, Pippi just pops out a window when they all leave. But it's raining again. They seek shelter in a broken down windmill. And it's our friend Conrad again. He's sleeping. And things get creepy. Very creepy. Annika's like, oh, he looks nice when he's sleeping. And when he wakes up and he's like, oh, hey, it's you kids again. Pippi tells him, hey, Conrad, Annika thinks you look nice when you're sleeping. And Annika sort of grabs onto his shoulder with both her hands. And I can't really understand what she's saying. But Conrad's like, well, that's just what happens when you're running away. Sometimes you eat, sometimes you don't. I have no idea what's going on right now. I'm sorry. And thankfully, little old man shows up and the kids ride him home. But they're kind of sad to see goodbye to Conrad again. Not Conrad. He's just like, don't forget my glue sticks to everything. Yeah. Yeah, good on you, Conrad. You know not to do things with kids. So they ride home to Tommy and Anika's house where he just starts stuffing their faces and they're glad to be with their parents again. Pippi rides little old man back to her house. She's getting soaked in the rain. And we have our final reality breaking. It's Pippi flying on her broom. Annika's like, Pippi, you know you can't fly on a broom. But Pippi's like, I know I can't, but the broom doesn't know that. So I'm flying. <laughs> That's a very silly ending. But yeah... I didn't enjoy this movie as much as the other three. Pippi in the South Seas, the movie, very good. I enjoyed that one. Except for that one scene I mentioned. And this one, Pippi on the Run, has more scenes that makes me uncomfortable. I am never coming back to this. But what about the other two? The 80s new adventure of Pippi Longstocking and the 90s animated Pippi Longstocking. Let's look at those now. But before I look at either of those, Let's look at this other thing that I learned about. If you're as old as I am and you watched Cartoon Network a lot, you would have learned of Shirley Temple and her Storybook Hour DVD collection. I didn't think much of it, but as I was looking up Pippi Longstocking, I learned that this show, Shirley Temple's Storybook, is like an hour long thing where they go through storybooks, naturally. And one episode was all about Pippi Longstocking. So I checked it out real quick. It's a lot shorter than these movies, I'll give you that. I believe this aired January 8th, 1961, well before the TV show and the movie with Inger Nielsen. I watched this on Tubi TV. I don't know if it'll be available if you check it out, but it was when I did. You can buy the collection, but I don't know enough about the collection to tell you if it's worth it or not. So yeah, it starts off the way I guess all the other movies started off. It's introducing us to Pippi. How she got separated from her dad. What's up with her mom. We meet Mr. Nielsen. And I feel bad for this version of Mr. Nielsen. Because he's just changed up the entire time. He looks very uncomfortable. I feel bad for him. We also have the horse. He's just hanging out on the porch. He seems fine, hopefully. But we just get Shirley Temple as Pippi just lying through her teeth. We move on to them being in the schoolroom again. And Pippi just being disruptive. We get a scene outside with the bullies and Pippi throws him up into the tree we cut back to her house where the cops try to take her to the children's home but she sticks them on the roof keeps them trapped there a bit until they acquiesce and leave her be we cut to her meeting the robbers it's a little different here than in the book and in the movie with Inger Nielsen. In this version, Pippi convinces them to make an honest living and she forces them to give up all their weapons which they have a lot of even a slingshot. <laughs> And since they're being so nice and cooperative with her, she gives each of them a gold coin, which makes them happy and they say thank you and they walk off. I like that. It's nice and wholesome. And the next scene, we immediately meet the robbers again, only this time they're working at the carnival, making an honest living, which is nice. Pippi competes with the strong man. She beats him. Finally, we get Captain of Frame showing up saying, Pippi, it's time to come with me. And unlike in the book, Pippi agrees immediately and leaves with him. But Tommy and Anika are like, hmm, we should go with her. And they leave without telling their parents. And that's how it ends with Shirley Temple's storybook. And I am an idiot. I thought... The kid playing Pippi was Shirley Temple, but no, Shirley Temple was the narrator for the whole segment. My bad. <laughs> but yeah, back to the new adventures of Pippi Longstocking, the 1980s movie. So what's up with 
The New Adventures of Pippi Longstocking. This movie came out in 1988. It is called a musical adventure film. It was directed by Kenakin. Ken Anakin. Ken Anakin? Anakin? <laughs> I'm not much of a movie buff, but this guy had quite the career. He did a bit of work with Walt Disney. He made a few feature films, some documentaries. He was 94 years old when he passed away in 1992. This was produced by Columbia Pictures. The actress that plays Pippi is named Tamara Aaron. But as an actress, her name is Tammy Aaron. I think her role as Pippi is her biggest role she's had. She's been in a few movies and TV shows. But mostly she's a philanthropist nowadays. The actor for Tommy is named David Seaman. He has a few acting credits, mostly from 1986 to 1991. I don't think he's currently active as an actor right now. The actress for Annika is named Corey Crow. She only has three other movies she was in, and she ultimately retired from acting in 2007 to become a teacher like the rest of her family. The actor for the evil businessman Mr. Blackheart is George DeCenso, or DeCenso. And this guy had an insane career. He has a whole bunch of roles. He was also a voice actor. He voiced Ennio Salieri in the video game Mafia in 2002. And he was also the grandfather of Marty McFly in Back to the Future. He sadly passed away in 2010 at 70 years old. Captain of Frame is played by John Shuck. He also has a pretty extensive film career. He's best known for his role as Sergeant Charles Enright in McMillan and Wife. As well as Herman Munster in the show The Monsters Today. I think he's still active as an actor right now. His last two movies were Santa Boot Camp and All Light Will End. Just to save a little on time, here's a quick look at all the other actors. And now on to the new adventures of Pippi Longstocking. This movie is a bit different from the original ones. The original one started off with some illustrations that weren't from the books. Except the third one. Where she goes to the South Seas, that one's just footage of pirates doing parody stuff. This one you get these illustrations that seem like they come from the books, but it's not the original style. And we eventually fade into the opening where we see Pippi singing. We see that they already have the horse. In the book she gets it after she arrives at the town. They're trying to teach Pippi but she just doesn't want to learn. And we get a storm that separates her from her dad. but. What I wasn't expecting was for them to already know about Curry Curry Dot Island, which we go to in the third book. Her dad mentions it. And when the storm arrives that takes him away, he's like, the current is taking me to the island. You go on ahead and wait for me at Villa Villa Kula. So it's not a mystery as to what happens to him as compared to the book where we don't learn about what happened with him until the second book. We get a quick scene of this version of Tommy and Anika. Wishing someone lived in Villa Villa Kula. And this rich, greedy guy that I mentioned way earlier shows up. And he's like, yo, anyone live here? No? Then it's absentee ownership. I'm going to tear this place down, fill it with concrete, develop it. And he and his guys are all giddy about it. We cut the Pippi. She's on a raft floating to the town, which is kind of odd. In the book, she was dropped off by the ship. I don't know why, but they use magical noises here, like she's some sort of magical girl. Uh, and I hate this. I hate this already. The horse is talking to her. We cut to Tommy and Anika sleeping in their home until they realize there's someone in Villa Villa Kula. You know, Annika, there's something strange going on in there. Annika? No. No, that can't be right. What is... What does the internet have to say? Um, no. Omni Stop it. Omni Stop. You can't do this Anika. to me. Anika. No, Anika. please Anika. stop. Anika. 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 Yeah, I guess I'm wrong. Well, it won't be the first time I got a name wrong and it won't be the last time either. Moving on, they go to check it out. They get scared by the horse. These two take a massive fall down the stairs. <laughs> and they get scared by Pippi who's getting her nightshirt on, but she kind of looks like a ghost. Pippi invites Tommy and Annika 
for a midnight snack and starts making pancakes and they're having fun and making a mess until their dad comes over and he's like this is a mess you two get back to bed and Pippi just keeps going on making her pancakes the next morning their dad is upset but their mom's just like whatever dude Pippi's brushing up the horse then she takes a bath with all her clothes on and then she does this magical girl thing to dry herself off it's super weird they're playing magical girl noises while she spins around hold on what does this say hold on let's see here uh-huh freckle face back for fun laughter yeah extraordinary independent girl quick mind good sense of humor magical powers what no 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 pippi does not have magical powers she has super strength maybe extra toughness but she is not magic i guess they're bringing in elements from the movies before where she just started breaking reality okay let's see what else happens we get a musical sequence of her scrubbing the floors with Tommy and Annika. It's fine, I guess. I'm not too sure about it being musical. Personally, I'm not that into musicals. Maybe you'll like it. The mom comes by to pick up Tommy and Annika. She doesn't seem to mind all the shenanigans, but then the rich guy that wants to buy the house shows up. And this time you get a really good look at his face. And they intentionally made him ugly to truly show off that he is evil. He tries to buy off the house from her, but she lures him out with a gold coin and locks him out. We cut to the next scene. Pippi's riding Alfonso and she's wearing a fancy dress. She has Alfonso pulling a motorcycle with a side carriage and it's being ridden by Tommy and Annika. Tommy's dressed like a pirate for some reason. We briefly see some kids from the children's home, but Pippi, Tommy and Annika are out shopping and Pippi's like, you know what? We should play with those kids. Tommy and Annika are hesitant, but Pippi still insists they're just kids like them. The kids from the children's home don't seem to have much fun. They have a very rigid lifestyle. There's one that's basically on the adult side and keeps an eye on the kids to keep them under control. But Pippi, being herself, goes out, buys a bunch of candy and toys to tempt the children, and lures them away like the Pied Piper. To have fun in the street where they could get run over by a car. <laughs> but now they just have fun. Then one of the adults comes by. They get super mad. We get a quick scene of Tommy and Annika's father, who's a lawyer, talking to the rich guy from before. The dad is going over some records and he can't seem to find anyone that owns Villa Villa Kula. And the rich guy is saying he's willing to pay any legal cost to get the house. And then we cut back to the chaos in the street. The dad tries to get Tommy and Annika under control. But they just hop into the sidecar of the motorcycle and Pippi drives it and I noticed that the motorcycle has her name on it. That's new. That's not in the book, I guess. And what's really not in the book is Pippi driving the motorcycle off a ramp and flying through the air magically. I can't get over the fact that they made her a magical girl instead of just naturally strong. But yeah, back at their home, the dad is angry. But the mom is chill because her kids are fine. Nothing happened to them. They're over at Pippi's house causing a ruckus until the mom comes to pick them up. And she invites Pippi over. But before we do get Pippi going over, we have a social worker coming over saying, Hey, I work at the children's home. We want you to come over and live there. But Pippi's like, I'm already in a children's home. This is my home. And the social worker's like, well, I have to come in, check things out, make sure it's all right for you to be here. Pippi does some accidental trolling on the poor social worker lady. Pippi set up some traps in her house that the social worker fell into. It eventually became too much for the social worker and she just leaves. We get the rich dude and his goons just peeping on Pippi and her friends. We're having fun, they're in the tree, and then they see an auto gyro, which is a real thing by the way. But the goons come by, dressed as animal control, saying that they have to take the horse and Mr. Nielsen in for some shots. And Pippi's like, no one is shooting my horse and monkey. And she starts messing with them. She throws one of them up a tree. We get the magical girl noises as she does so. She steals one of their hats, climbs up on the roof. She traps them there. Then she lets them down and scares them off. And the rich guy's like, what is wrong with you two? We could have had the house and all of her money. 
from here you cut off to the auto gyro from before Pippi wanted to fly it, but the guy that owns it didn't really let her. He told her how it works, but it's kind of dangerous and he has to do it. And then he flies off. And then we cut off to Pippi having dinner with Tommy, Annika, and their parents. Pippi naturally makes a mess of things, but the mom kind of seems more concerned for Pippi than concerned over her antics, acting like an actual mother towards Pippi despite not being her actual mother. And Pippi explains in this scene that her mom is up in heaven we cut off to the morning pippi is kind of hanging out outside of the school the teacher is like pippi you have to come in you can't stay out there it's dangerous but eventually the teacher just closes the windows on pippi and we cut to the scene of some police a fire truck the social worker lady all heading towards pippi's place and this kid comes by and says to pippi that they're trying to take her away and tommy and annika are like pippi the only choice we have is to run away, just like in the 70s movie. <laughs> okay, this scene is pretty over the top. It really jumps the shark, <laughs> but I had fun with it. We find out that Pippi was building her own gyrocopter in her barn. It's basically like Pippi in the South Seas where she made her own airplane there. Only here she made a gyrocopter. Tommy and Annika are pedaling bikes to make the propeller in the front go. And Pippi is spinning around like a propeller. <laughs> it's kind of funny because you can see that in the flying scenes, they replaced the actual actress with a mannequin holding a broom up. And it's just spinning around like crazy. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Eventually Pippi stops spinning around and she drops the broom. But it's fine, they keep on flying for a while. But Pippi and friends crash land on an island in the lake. Pippi uses her magical girl powers to start a fire. Mm. It's nighttime, Annika is kind of freaking out, and Pippi whips out a flintlock. <laughs> I don't know where she had it, but she had it. She pretends to shoot it, and we get the magical girl noises again. They get the guy with the auto gyro to start flying around looking for the kids. And the kids just start playing in the water. Like in the last movie that we watched. It makes me uncomfortable again. Thankfully it's not as egregious as the last movie. And here too we get a cow eating their clothes. They do their best to cover up and head out. They hop in some barrels and start riding down the river. But they're coming up on a waterfall. And they get scared. Thankfully the guy in the auto gyro finds them and saves them and the three of them get picked up by Tommy and Annika's parents. From here we get something different from the books because the social worker is at Villa Villa Kula again. It's night and she actually manages to finally convince Pippi to come over and give the children's home a try. We get the morning. The dad is talking with the social worker like, I hope we're doing the right thing. He gets into his car. He's talking to the rich guy that wants Pippi's house. And from what he's saying, it sounds like the rich guy is getting closer to actually owning Villa Villa Kula. Meanwhile, Pippi is in the classroom of the children's home. The teacher doesn't have any patience for her and makes her sit in the corner. The mom came by to come visit Pippi. But since Pippi is being punished, the mom isn't allowed to see her. We cut to night again. It lights out, but Pippi's still up. She's telling tall tales again. One of the girls that's more on the adult side... Tries keeping Pippi under control, but she doesn't have much success. We cut to the next day and Pippi is drawing on the ground inside. Naturally, this gets the teacher really angry. And she's like, if you don't shape up, we're putting you in the box. And there's this like tin shack outside where they lock up all the unruly kids. I don't know what this lady is on, but if she thinks she can stick Pippi in that thing and keep her there, she has... No idea what she's going to be in for because Pippi can just turn it around and come out on top. I'm also pretty sure that's not legal anymore. Maybe, hopefully. We move on to another scene where Pippi's asking her mom what to do. And she gets inspired and she's like, you know what? You're right. We cut the night and Pippi's like, all right, I'm out of here. This place isn't for me. But she has to sneak out or oh, stealth mode. She finds her way into the attic where she meets this homeless guy that's been living there for quite a while. 
And this guy is the new version of Conrad from before. He's got this super sticky glue. He uses to climb up the wall and live here in the attic where no one can ever see him. And he gets Pippi to play along with him and the glue. Pippi is actually scared in this version, wondering if she can actually do it. But with some convincing from the homeless guy, she actually manages to walk up the wall with her shoes all covered in glue. We get happy triumphant music. We also get a quick scene of this guy smoking, looking up into the attic, saying, Anyone here? No? Okay then. And he just drops his lit cigarette on some old newspaper, and we see it start smoking. Hmm. Pippi uses the glue to climb out the window, just walk down the wall, and she throws a message in a bottle into the ocean. As she's coming back, the children's home is completely on fire. She sees her friend and a couple of kids are trapped up there. The homeless guy jumps out, but the two kids are too scared to even try. So Pippi climbs up and saves them. But she has to go back and get Mr. Nielsen because he's decided to stay behind for whatever reason. This actually happens in the book, by the way. Kind of. There is a moment where she saves two kids from a burning building, but Mr. Nielsen doesn't get stuck there, like here. Pippi says she'd rather go home to Villa Villa Quilla, and the social worker acquiesces. Pippi goes back. It's winter time now. I think I think it was spring or summer before. So this is a massive time jump. And Pippi's just looking out the window when all of a sudden, kids from the children's home and the social worker come by. They give Pippi a present. It's a puppy. It's Lassie. She has Lassie now. Aw, <laughs> that's kind of cute. And we also see the rich guy and his goons. And he also learned a valuable lesson from Pippi that if you believe in something, you can make it happen. And he really believes he can get her home. So he's going to keep on trying. We get Pippi, Tommy, and Annika playing around. When all of a sudden Captain of Frame comes in, he and Pippi are happy to see each other again. Next scene we get Pippi sailing away with a frame until she notices Annika crying. And she's like, Dad, I can't bear to see the sight of someone crying because of me. And she decides to head on back. And she starts off by throwing the horse overboard and then swimming after him. Her dad just tells her to keep on being herself. And we end with a montage of the movie. Ending with Pippi's face getting turned into an illustration as the credits roll on top of it. And that's the new adventures of Pippi Longstocking. It was a fine movie. It added its own things, modernized it a little bit. And now finally, the animated movie. The animated movie came out in 1997. It was co-directed by Michael Schack and Clive A. Smith. It was written by Katharina Stackelberg. And it was a joint production by Swedish, German, and Canadian companies. The voice actress for Pippi was Melissa Altro. The voice for Tommy was Noah Reed. Okay, I have been getting the runaround with the voice actors for Tommy and Annika. And it finally occurred to me that I should just look at the actual credits in the movie. So here we go. Here's the list of all the voice actors and actresses. Tommy's voice actor is Noah Reed. Annika's voice actresses are Olivia Garrett as the normal speaking voice. And Judy Tate as the singing voice. IMDb and Wikipedia are fine for starting off points, but in the long run, they are false prophets that will lead you to your doom. Do not be like me, and get away from them as soon as possible when you're studying or researching stuff. Moving on, it starts off with Mr. Nielsen just running around the ship, causing a little bit of chaos before he meets Pippi. And we get the opening sequence where Pippi just sings over everything that's happening, singing about her experiences on the sea. And then the storm hits. We find out that she already has horse. He's just chilling, eating some hay, watching all the chaos happen in the storm. A frame gets knocked over naturally, and he just tells Pippi to wait for him at Villa Villa Coola. We get our first musical sequence. It's just Pippi riding horse to Villa Villa Coola. When she gets to her house, she just starts cleaning. She blows away some tarps covering up some furniture, and she stashes her gold coins in a chest. We see Tommy and Annika playing croquet, bored out of their minds. And we see a lady scoop by on her bike. Her name is Mrs. Priscillius. She is our main antagonist for this movie, or at least one of them. But once she's away, we get Pippi, Tommy, and 
Annika meeting, them telling Pippi it's bad to lie and Pippi agreeing. And then she invites them over to Villa Villa Kula and we get another musical sequence with her making pancakes. The musical sequence is fine. It's fun. And when it's over we get Mrs. Priscilius sticking her nose where it doesn't belong. Tommy and Annika leave and Mrs. Priscilius just starts talking to Pippi and she's like, no. No child shall live alone. You must go to the children's home. Pippi drives her away for now and we cut to the police and the two burglars. The officers are basically the same person and so are their wives and the criminals are kind of different from their other versions. In the book they're just a couple of homeless guys that wanted some food and thought they stumbled onto an opportunity but they repented and each got a cold coin. In the first four movies they were just straight up criminals the entire time always trying to steal Pippi's gold. In the new adventures they were just the goons for the rich guy that so didn't really matter that much but here one of them the big one wants a golden tooth and the skinny guy wants a hat a bowler hat an english bowler hat the big guy wants the golden tooth so his tongue doesn't hang out when he's talking because he's only got like two or three teeth at best and they both think that with these things they'll be able to start raking in money through all kinds of means really they're just Shallow guys that want the easy life through scamming people. <laughs> Mrs. Priscilius comes to the jail and talks to the police telling them that they have to take Pippi to the children's home where she belongs. And for whatever reason she also mentions Pippi's gold coins which she surprisingly is unswayed by. I guess in her own way she actually does care. She's just way too rigid in her way of thinking. And naturally the two burglars overhear this and they're like... Ooh, there's a child living alone with a bunch of gold coins that we're gonna steal that and get everything we've ever wanted. Did I mention that these two guys had a musical sequence talking about them wanting the hat and the tooth? Yeah, they had that. And we cut to Pippi watering her plants while it's raining. Tommy and Annika swing by telling her that they have to go to school, learn multiplication. And Pippi's like, Plutification? What's that? Maybe I'll swing by later. And she does. The teacher is not that enthused with Pippi. And we get another musical sequence. The teacher starts singing about education, learning and teaching and stuff and math. And Pippi sings along but in her own way which does not make the teacher happy but eventually all the kids start singing along with Pippi and there's basically a mutiny against the teacher. <laughs> The teacher finally gives up and she's like, I'm sorry Pippi, but if you can't behave, you can't be here. And basically kicks her out, but it's fine. As Pippi is walking away with Tommy and Annika riding the horse, we find out that the circus is coming to town. We also find out that Mrs. Priscilius is having coffee and cake with Tommy and Annika's mom, along with the wives of the cops. Pippi inserts herself <laughs> and causes chaos. As she does, she spins around Mrs. Priscilius on her finger like a basketball and eventually drives her away. Tommy and Anika's mom is not very happy with Pippi and asks her to leave. Pippi sad, missing her dad, wondering what exactly she should do. And the two burglars break out of prison. They steal the cop's motorcycle and the cops are like, Oh, that sounds like our motorcycle. We should really get the muffler fixed. We cut back to Pippi counting her gold coins and that's when the burglars show up. It kind of follows what happens in the book. They see all the gold. They ask her if there's anyone else with her. She mentions Mr. Nielsen who's upstairs. He's making noise and the burglars are like, cool, cool. See you later. We cut to the next day. The cops come over to take Pippi to the children's home. But in this version, she actually convinces them that this is a children's home and she's living here and fixing it up. And they're like, oh, well, isn't that lovely? Shall we help you? Mrs. Priscilius would no doubt enjoy us helping you make this children's home more livable. They get up on the roof and start doing repairs there. Mrs. Priscilius shows up to see how they're doing. Finds out they really misinterpreted everything and she's just like oh these idiots and she goes away because not only are they idiots they start messing up very badly and dropping roof tiles all over the place we cut the night pippi's learning how to dance the thieves are there they're looking in they're seeing her and mr nielsen's shadows dancing around what surprises me here is that 
the big guy seems to be the smarter one of the two. And I don't mean in comparison, I mean in general. Like he actually seems like a competent thief. They sneak in, they bump into Pippi, they find out that Mr. Nielsen is actually a monkey. They try taking the gold, but Pippi takes her gold back. No matter how hard they try, they can't really outwit her or overpower her. And in the end, they decide to run away. And as they are, Pippi's like, guys, I was gonna give you these gold coins, which is kind of odd. They're more nefarious in this movie. As compared to in the book where they're just a couple of homeless guys that are really down on their luck and just needed some help. We cut to the next day. Pippi's setting up some traps when Tommy and Annika show up to invite her to the circus and they head off while the two thieves are in the background just watching them. And Mrs. Priscilla shows up and walks into the trap. The thieves laugh at her and she's like, oh, it's you two again. So there's kind of a relationship between her and the thieves enough where she won't immediately threaten to take them back to prison and they strike a bargain where they take Pippi to the children's home. Mrs. Priscilius because she thinks it's good for Pippi and the thieves because with her out of the way they can get all the gold. We're at the circus, the kids are having fun, the thieves dress up as clowns but they kind of get stopped in place because this guy is practicing knife throwing and they don't want to get stabbed. Pippi is facing off against the strongman and picks him up as he's holding up some weights and she wins. The thieves come in and they pick her up, do a lap around the ring and head to the back. And Pippi's like, oh, I recognize you. Seems you guys chose a different career. And the big guy's like, oh, yes. Yes, we definitely chose a different path this time. But before they could actually do anything, the... Skinny guy keeps pedaling and they crash into a closet. Pippi, Annika, and Tommy just walk away. Miss Priscilius isn't impressed by their antics and tells the thieves to get after Pippi. But then Mrs. Priscilius sees the cops and tells them that the thieves are on the loose and they need to get them. The thieves steal a truck thing that plays music automatically as it goes. And this music scares the horse and he starts running away as fast as he can to get away from it. The horse runs off the road. So the thieves can't really get after them. But the big guy's like, you know what? I have a better idea. Let's go. And Mrs. Priscilius just keeps chasing after Pippi while riding on her bike. The cops get distracted by this legendary fish they've been trying to catch. And finally at Villa Villa Quilla, we get Pippi being confronted by a very angry Mrs. Priscilius. And Pippi's dad's here. Kept in the frame. Despite everything, Mrs. Priscilius actually manages to calm down and let it go. Because there's a father. He's here. He's present in his daughter's life. There's no need for her to stick her nose in here. And she kind of has the hots for a cat in her frame. Ooh. The burglars get caught up in some of Pippi's traps and just run away so hard that they accidentally jump into the cop's car. And the cop's like, huh? I thought they were in jail. Well, guess they're going back to jail. <laughs> Much like the other movies, we get Captain of Frame asking Pippi to go with him to Kurikurita Island. And while she's on the boat, she decides not to leave because she can't stand the sight of people crying over her. And she rides off on horse with Tommy and Annika back to Villa Villa Kula. This was a nice movie. And apparently this movie acted as a sort of pilot for the TV series that followed. I would have been interested in watching the TV series, but this has gone on way too long. You can do it if you want to. I'm pretty sure it's on Tubi. All of these movies, you can get a physical copy of. I personally bought them all off of Barnes & Noble. I'm sure you can find them on eBay, Amazon, or whatever for cheaper. Some of these are on Prime Video, iTunes, Google Play, Voodoo, I think Roku TV as well. Just know not everything is available everywhere. As of recording, the new adventures of Pippi Longstocking, the 1980s one, isn't available on Tubi, but the animated movie is. I don't see anything about the 60s and 70s one. And they also have the Shirley Temple version, which is only like an hour long, but you can't watch any of the other versions. Yeah, you either have to hunt around or Buy everything physical. Uh, despite everything, I had fun. I definitely recommend the book. The book is fun. It's fine. Like I said much earlier before, you can either get the big purple one that's a collection of all three books, 
It has some illustrations by Michael Chesworth. I'm not sure how many of the smaller ones there are, but I'm pretty sure you can also get the main three books separate and those might have more illustrations than what's in the big purple collection. This is all just me making assumptions. I don't really know. Really, everything is all up to you, your taste, what you feel you're comfortable with. I hope you enjoyed. I didn't go over everything that's in the book, or at least I hope I didn't. I know I definitely spoiled a lot of stuff. Sorry about that. But there's still some stuff in there that you should check out. I also learned from Animation Obsessive that there was going to be a TV series made by Studio Ghibli. But ultimately Astrid Lindgren decided not to go through with it. You can read more about it on their substack. I'll leave a link below. And I hope you had as much fun with it as I did. Later. Thanks for watching.